Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make a shop GUI in your little garden game. If we come over to the shop stand, as you can see, it opens up the GUI with a scrolling frame. I only have one button added, and you can customize it however you want, but we can close out of it. And if we press the carrot seed button, um, as you can see, our value goes down. And we can continue to purchase until we do not have enough coins to afford another carrot. If we go ahead and plant our nine carrot seeds that we just bought after claiming our garden, we can wait for it to grow. And then once it, did, once it is done growing, we can actually collect our carrots for a profit whenever we go to sell them. So we'll collect them, go to the sell stand, sell. And as you can see, we now have 304 coins. I can buy more carrot seeds. And I now have more carrots um, than we bought the first time. And it's just a continuous flow of money. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to make the stand. And I'm going to be a little bit lazy here. I'm just going to select the exact same stand I made from the last video. And I'm going to copy it. Just paste it over here. Um, <laughs> If I can, maybe I could just make this guy blue. So if I just go to torso, change that to like a blue color, get rid of like the shirt. There we go. And then I'm going to rename this to, um, instead I'm going to rename this to buy. And in the proximity prompt, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to get rid of these scripts. So, uh, oh yeah, and one more thing. Let me just change the sign to say buy instead. So, buy, or I could just say shop and change the text to be blue. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, once you have your stand modeled with your proximity prompts within the part, um, we're gonna go and make the GUI. So in the starter GUI, just go ahead and insert a screen GUI. And I'm going to name this shop. I don't need this one. I'm gonna name this to shop GUI. And then in the shop GUI, I'm gonna insert a frame. I must place it in the center. I'm gonna change the anchor points to 0.5. Um, center it. And uh, you know, scale it up a little bit. So it's somewhere just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and customize the background. So I'm going to give it a bit of a brown color, like a soft brown color, just like that. And then we can customize this to, uh, we can customize the buttons up here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to make like an exit button. So I'm just going to make a button there. And then we can set the anchor points to 0.5. Name this the exit button. Uh, we can change the background color to be like a light red. And then give a big old X over here. So it's X scaled X. And then change the text color to be white. There we go. So now I think it's a good idea if we insert a uh, the scroll GUI for all the, the, the things we want to buy. So since we only have one item to buy uh, in this tutorial series, uh, which is the carrot, I'm just going to add one button, but I'll show you how to add more if you wanted to. So I am going to, let's see, let's see here. I'm going to insert a scroll frame. So if we look up scroll, we can see scrolling frame, and then I'm going to change the anchor points to be 0.5. And then I'm going to scale this to what I think would fit best. Something like that. And then scale down. Here we go. So now we have our little, our, our little scrolling frame here. Um, let me change the background transparency to be 0.5. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. Now, in the scrolling frame, this is where we're going to put all of our buttons. So, I'm going to 
put a text button. Actually, before I do that though, let me uh, script the exit button. All you're gonna do here is that you're just going to insert a local script and then type script. You're gonna insert a local script in the text button and then you're gonna type script dot parent dot mouse um, button one click connect function and then just say script dot parent dot parent which is the frame dot visible we're gonna set the visibility to be false so if we go ahead and run this and we click here why is it not letting me click oh I'm running it lol let me try this again play here and we click the X everything should disappear so now that we got that out of the way now let's work on the buttons um, for the seeds that we want to sell so let's see here for the scrolling frame we're going to insert a text button and you can make it pretty if you want to you could actually just insert a a little label button or an image button if you want but I'm going to have just a button here and I'm going to name this button carrot uh, purchase okay so now what we're gonna do is uh, customize this so zero there we go now I like that so since we have our first button here in our scroll frame we can go ahead and start scripting uh, this button so I'm going to uh, first of all put our carrot seed inside of uh, replicated storage and then I am going to hmm I'm actually gonna make a folder in replicated storage and I'm gonna put the carrot seed in there I'm gonna rename this folder to seed pack or seed folder okay so we have our carrot seed in our seed folder in replicated storage now um, with that we are going to add a remote event inside of replicated storage and I'm just gonna name this the purchase event. okay now now let's just um, let's just start scripting the uh, the button the purchase button over here so what we're gonna do is we are going to insert a local script here actually what we're gonna do is that we're going to make this frame pop up so first of all whenever the player uh, clicks the or presses E or activates the proximity prompt here we gotta make this whole GUI pop up so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go in the frame and we are going to insert a script or a local script a local script we're just gonna name this the open script and what we're gonna say is game or well game dot workspace dot by stand. Oh wait, did I rename the stand? No, I did not. Make sure that your cell stand is named differently. So my um, cell stand, I'm actually going to name this the shop stand. Okay. And then so now what we're gonna say is game dot workspace dot cell stand dot by part if that's in there yes or no not shop stand what am I saying I'm, my brain is lagging I'm gonna say shop stands dot by part dot proximity prompts dot triggered connect function and then script dot parent dot visible equals true so let's try let's test this out if I just set this to false and I play here I go up to the shop, I interact, it should pop up, and then I can close out of it. Now we can start scripting the purchase scripts. I forgot to totally do that, but let's start moving on. So in the scrolling frame over here, I'm going to insert a local script. And I'm going to rename the scripts the, um, uh, what should the buy button? Okay. Okay. So. There's not that much. Uh, there's not that much script to it. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we are going to make a variable for the parent by just saying parent equals script parent. Then we're going to make a variable for the events over here in replicated storage. And then whenever the carrot button has been purchased, we are going to make two variables that set the price of the carrot, and the um, we're just gonna get the 
what, what the name of the tool that we're purchasing. So what we're doing is that we're just copying and pasting the name of our tool or, or our seeds that's in the seed folder. And so make sure that it is exact. So um, let me go ahead and change this capital or lowercase s to a capital S so that it is the exact same characters. And then we're going to go ahead and fire the purchase event over here and then um, oops, I forgot to say, we're going to print processing purchase um, dot 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 just to make it look a little more cooler. And so if we test all this out by making this invisible and then playing here, and then we go to the shop, or actually let me open up the output here. So we can see the output, if we open up the shop and try to purchase, it will say processing purchase. So if we wanted to get a little bit fancy here, we could just say print processing purchase um, and then the name and then the price. So if we interact and we have the shop here and we buy it, we could say processing purchase carrot seed for $50, right? So let's just stop right there. And now we have the local script. So now what we need to do is we need to make a server scripts so that the um, events can carry through from just the player to the rest of the server. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to go into inside of server script service. We're going to insert a script and then I'm going to type some code and let you all know. Um, I'm going to cut forward and explain it all in just a bit. Okay, so after a little bit of testing, um, here's the script. So what we're doing is that whenever the uh, event has been fired, we're going to make some variables. One for the um, the player's coins, which I, I forgot that I named it coins, not dollars. And then uh, we're going to uh, get the seed that we're purchasing, and then we're going to make a clone of that seed, just um, just in case. So um, if the player's coins uh, is greater than the price or equal to, then we are going to subtract the price from the coins, and then we're going to check if the player already has those seeds or not. And so what we're going to do is if the player um, if the seed is in the player's backpack, then all we're going to do is that we're just going to add one to the value in the seed. Because if you remember from the first video of the series, what we did was that we added a value in here to tell us the amounts of seeds that are in here, which um, actually I forgot I left it at seven. So I'm going to change that to one. Um, but if the uh, if we cannot find the seed in the backpack, then what we're going to do is that we're just going to take the clone. Um, we're going to clone it inside of the player's backpack. And I have prints um, there in case if it is there in the backpack. And I have print does not have um, in case if they do not have it. And so if we go ahead and test this out, um, before I do, I'm going to go to the leader stats and I'm going to change my value to a random number. So um, I'm going to do something like two, uh, 243, right? Um, I'm also going to change the name of the scripts that we just made to uh, purchasing purchase scripts just so we don't get confused with which script is which um, and now I'm going to test this out so if I go over to the shop and I interact with it um, what we have here is the, the button and we press it as we can see it says um, we did not have it but now we just purchased it and we have one seed and our value went down by 50 and so if we press it again our value will go down by 50 again and it shows us that it is already there and so if we keep purchasing as you can see we do not have above 50 coins and um, we were only able to purchase four seeds now let's see if it still works from the last videos if we claim this garden and then we plant these seeds as you can see they are slowly ever so slowly starting to grow and in just a bit, let's see if, there we go, we can collect them. Um, and then we can interact and sell all of our seeds for what we, uh, yep. As you can see, there is a slight uh, profit problem. I did make the carrots worth less than they are in this shop, so that is no problem. All I can do is, um, what I can do is that I can go inside of the shop GUI and then into the buy button I can change the price of the carrots to be 25 and so um, let me just change this to coins and then if we go ahead and play this 
I opened up the shop. As you can see, it is only taking 29 or 25 coins per purchase. And I was able to purchase nine. If we go over here, plant all the seeds that we just bought after claiming the garden. Let me speed this up. All right, there we go. Now we can collect our carrots. Go ahead to the sell stand, sell all the carrots, and then we have finally made a profit. And I can buy more carrots if I wanted to. And now I have 12 carrot seeds. If I plant them all again, wait for them to grow. There we go. So now they're done growing. I could just go ahead and collect it. And then sell it all. And boom, we have made more profit. Now, if I wanted to add more, all I would have to do is, you know, go into my seed folder, um, place in my uh, next seed. So whatever that's going to be, I could just say potato seed, right? And then all I got to do is go into the buy button. Basically copy paste all this uh, code and then I could change this to be 50 if I wanted to. Um, I just need to rename this to potato. Whoa, what the heck? All I gotta do is just name this to potato seed. Uh, remember, the name has to match the name of the seed that is in the folder over here. And then make sure that you copy the button that is in your frame. So if I make this visible and I say, and I duplicate this, bring this down a little bit and rename this to potato purchase right and then go to the buy button i need to rename this to potato purchase and then um it will know which what we are buying so either the carrot or the potato and then if we press this button we'll get the carrot if we press this we'll get the potato okay and we could actually test this out right now um if i insert a value into the potato seed so I just do a number value, rename, rename this to amount. Well, not all caps. Okay, and then change the value to one. If I play here. Okay, we interact. I could buy a potato seed for, let's see, a potato seed for 50 coins. And yeah. Now we have a whole bunch of potato seeds, but um, I didn't add any scripts into the potato seed, so I can't claim it, but that is just how you made a, that's how you uh, add an extra button to the thing. But yeah, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I know I was bouncing around a little bit, so if you guys get confused and lost, um, I will leave a link in the description for this uh, shop GUI um, with instructions on how to add extra buttons. But that is all uh, to this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments and concerns, leave them in the comments below. And also, so I will take video suggestions um, so I can make that for future videos. And I will give you a shout out and I'll mention your comment within the video. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it works out for you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.